Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's July 7th, 2019. I'm out on the access road between the central garden plot and the eastern garden plots over here. And today we're just going to do a garden update. And there will be a little bit of GoPro footage taking a look at it from an aerial perspective towards the end of this video. And I'll be putting on my GoPro mounted head cam to walk through the, air, the gardens as well. Uh, the first thing that I'll say is that we're managing these these different uh, garden plot locations differently. This is a non-bio intensive system over here with the exception of the carrots. Uh, we're using weed mats that don't have holes burning them and we're initially putting the transplants with a couple of inches on each side of the transplants in without any weed mat and the paths and the rest of the beds are being completely covered by the weed mats. That's to decrease the amount of weed uh, development in those beds. We do have to do some weeding until the plant matures in that narrow couple inch wide path uh, access where the, where the plants are planted in a single row. We have less, less production with that system, but we have uh, very little weed management in it. And I posted a video last year about this system. I'll put it in the upper right hand corner so you can go back and look at that. We had challenges with the uh, with the weed mats doing some, when we get those full sun days and the sun beating down in that hot black mat, uh, doing some damage to the plants. And we have lost plants as a result of that. So we're modifying our system each year to see how we can mitigate that as well, those problems. Uh, the system that we're using over in the eastern garden plots, with the exception of one uh, permanent raised bed, is we're not using weed mats for the most part. And it's a little more bio-intensive, either two rows or three rows or even five rows of plants in some of these permanent raised beds. Uh, it's been pretty productive and we're utilizing different tools to, uh, to control the weeds. And so I'm going to stop the video here for a second from, from the update on the gardens and just answer one question from BG. Uh, last year I did a review of the Two Bad Cats uh, uh, wire pole, uh, wire, wire weeders. And uh, we have a handheld one and this long one that's, that's uh, very lightweight aluminum with a nice rubber grip on it with interchangeable heads uh, for the wire weeder. And there's different shapes of the wire weeder that fits in here. And what BG had asked was, uh, how quick is it to change out the wire heads? Is there a bolt in it? Uh, how, you know, how does it work? So simply, uh, this isn't as efficient and quick to change as the never sink uh, weeding, weeding uh, pole and interchangeable heads, which uses a system that's sim similar to an impact driver. So it snaps in, locks in, and holds in place very, very well. And at the end of this season, I'll be doing a review on all of our weeding tools and our weeding, how we're using those weeding tools and some tools that aren't considered weeding tools that we're using as weeders as well. But to answer uh, BG's questions, uh, it's not, not as quick as a never sink system. There's one bolt with a Phillips head uh, screw on one end and a lock nut that has a, a nylon uh, uh, retaining ring in it so that when you put, you, you need to have a wrench and a screwdriver in order to, to take this, this wire head off. So that takes a minute to do that if you've got those tools handy. Then inside of this aluminum pole, so this is a, a aluminum pipe in a sense, inside of this aluminum pipe is aluminum uh, solid uh, shaft. So, and it fits perfectly inside of it. So let's say that, I'm not sure what the actual dimensions are, but the outside of this aluminum pole uh, pipe looks look to be about one inch and it's probably uh, you know three sixteenths of an inch thickness wall so whatever the size of that uh, solid aluminum shaft is it fits in there and it's just a plug that's that's a couple inches long and it has grooves cut in it to accept this this uh, wire part so once you take the bolt out you pull the shaft the solid shaft that's inside of this aluminum pipe it's all aluminum so it's not going to corrode and you pull it out and then you snap in the next wire uh, attachment into it, slide the shaft with the uh, snapped in uh, wire uh, weeding instrument back into the pipe, put the bolt back through, snug up the, lug, the, the, uh, the lock, locking nut and you're good to go. So it takes a couple of minutes to make the change. I find that 
as much as I like the never sink uh, quick change pole system that's on a carabiner that you can put on your belt or put on your pant loop, I do like that a lot. Uh, this is much slower, but I use this weeder all the time with this head on it and the short handle one I use with its wire weeder on I haven't actually changed it, although I have multiple uh, uh, connections for these when necessary. So I hope that answers your question, BG. <clears throat> now back to the, uh, to the uh, video on the garden update. I'm going to go ahead and kill this deer fly <laughs> and put on my GoPro uh, helmet cam and we'll go over and take a look in and see what the gardens look like. Here we go. Okay, I've got the uh, helmet cam on and uh, we're here in the central garden plot. So this is the one that utilizes the weed mats. There is a weed mat down here that has holes in it, but I just covered up an area that it was exposed that we, uh, through the wood chips, we were getting weeds down there at the end. Up against the building is some comfrey. We uh, did chop this down to do some uh, mulching of the garlic bed uh, over there not too long ago. I do have to do a little bit of weeding here, but this is almost an entirely weed-free uh, weed system, with the exception of the weeds that can grow in the very beginning uh, down here in between each of the plants in this single row. One thing I do like about this system here is I do do weeding, I throw the plants, or if I'm doing uh, harvesting of plants, if I see a leaf that I don't like, I just throw it on the black mat. One day in the sun, uh, it, the weeds are dead. Uh, by three days, it's turned into almost a powder, and I can just blow it down here with the, uh, with the uh, electric uh, leaf blower, I guess you, you'd call it. One challenge with this weed mat system, we get really high winds here and therefore it is a huge challenge keeping these down. So we have to stake anywhere from every six inches with these wire staples down here all the way up to uh, six inches to 12 inches, some, in some cases every 18 inches. Where we're doing double mats, we can go a couple of feet apart. So there's two mats in between each row, one that goes up against this side and one that goes up against this side over here. So over here in our first row, we have our, our uh, tomato plants. They've done really well so far, so I'm not sure how well this is gonna show up. We're just starting to get some flowers, and yes, there is a weed in here, I can see that now. And I'll get that later. But there's very few weeds with this system. And uh, here we're using uh, the concrete reinforced uh, cages that, that I made. These are just over two feet in diameter. There's a piece of half inch rebar that I cut at five foot lengths and drive into that into the space that's between the two weed mats that come up and use a wire tie, removable wire ties on each side to do it. And that makes this whole system very sturdy. Uh, we haven't had these wire uh, tomato uh, supports blow over as of yet. So that's worked out pretty darn well. We did lose one tomato, which we replaced with one of the pepper plants. And the pepper plants, it's finally starting to warm up around here, so that's good. Over here we have our uh, Acer red cabbage planted all along in here and, uh, and basil in between being next to a companion plant for the tomatoes. We have it close to the tomatoes and I just got done harvesting a whole bunch of basil that is dehydrating today. So the, uh, the cabbage has been going pretty well so far. This uh, scarlet, uh, scarlet kale which I got from uh, M.I. Gardener uh, from uh, seeds from them really has done extremely well. They great germination, uh, very hardy plants. We've har been harvesting them all along. And I've kept the gap wide here. Probably next week I'll close up the, the gap because the stalks on these plants will have hardened up, been so hardy that the, and the leaves will no longer be touching the weed mat that we can stop doing any of this little bit of weeding from all our maple seeds and all the other weed seeds that come over into the garden. So we can close up that gap probably next week. Over here we have some cauliflower. We closed this up a little bit too soon and we lost a few of the uh, cauliflower plants. We also, one of the plants that we've had a real tremendous amount of success with is our curly kale. We save our seeds from some of our curly kale every few years. 
and it's done extremely well. And last week, uh, and we've been harvesting it just like the scarlet kale, but you see the scarlet kale plants over there are doing a little bit better and look and, and are producing better leaves than these ones over here. And I think it's because we closed this, this space up a little bit too early. So, uh, you know, there's another maple tree there. Uh, so the heat is, has affected the growth and there's actually been all these little axillary uh, leaves starting to come out. And I think that's because these, we closed up the weed mat just too early, just like I did with the cauliflower. So uh, that's something to, to learn from this process. Tremendous heat radiates from the absorption of the, heat, of the solar radiation, and that can really affect the stalk and those plants that are close to it. So you need those stalks to get up higher before you close up the weed mat around them. Over here, uh, this is our oriental style. Uh, eggplants, we really had horrible germination, very slow germination, very poor germination this year. And, uh, and unfortunately, now the, uh, the flea beetles have gotten to the leaves as well. Now this will, will probably resolve within the next couple of weeks, the flea beetles. Each year we get the flea beetles hitting them. We usually have the pill bugs hit them and the flea beetles. But we lost Oh, several. So there's one missing from here. One, two, three, four, five. It looks like we lost probably about 10 eggplants. Some look really ratty right now, uh, but that's okay. If they will survive the next couple of weeks, they'll come back and look much better than what they look right now. Uh, we won't close up this area hardly at all, and I may not close it up at all. And you'll see some little stalky pieces here. And what I did do as I broke a rule of gardening is I did do some transplants of some of the carrots that we have from over there, which I'll get to in just a moment. So I came over here yesterday. We had a little bit of rain yesterday, so I knew it was about to rain. So I came over, dug up, uh, thinned some of the carrot plants over there, and I put a few over there, and I took the rest of them and put them in here. We had some rain yesterday. I watered it uh, twice also yesterday, but all of the leaves hung over. So the first thing I did this morning was come up come out and cut off the tops. It may not work at all, but I thought it was worth a shot. Since I had these spaces between the eggplants, we don't have any egg, more eggplants to replace them with. So put some carrots with the t cut off tops in here and see will they take over and come back. I've had some pretty interesting results with carrots in the past, so that may work. Over here we have some broccoli. We closed this gap up again, I think a little bit too early, and that's affected. It killed one of the plants here, and the rest are doing okay, but they aren't doing quite as well as the broccoli in the other beds. So closing up this gap a little bit too early. Here we have our carrots, and I can't tell you why we had such heavy seeding in, in this first row and a half here. Um, I covered that in the last video. So I used the, what was the appropriate uh, seed roller in my Jang seeder, and it just dumped out the seeds so rapidly. These seeds must have been smaller than the average carrot seeds is all I can think, or, or I don't know how it happened. Uh, but it dumped a ton of seeds in there, and there's probably three to six seeds per inch. So yesterday I did come out and I thinned a, quite a few of them, as you can see down in here. And I took some of the ones, if there was something missing, like right in here, I put these in here. And they may not take, here's another one right there. Uh, if they don't take, okay. But I had come back, um, I think it was probably two weeks ago, that I used the Jang Seeder and I used the same seed roller, a different package of seeds, and they laid down the seeds pretty darn well. So uh, no thinning uh, necessary for the second time we did it. And uh, so my thoughts are I may pull up a bunch more of these, but we'd have to have some cooler, rainier days. Uh, or I may just pull up some of the, the carrots, uh, although it does traumatize the adjacent carrots to it when you pull up carrots when they're pretty good size. But if they're sizey or pinky, uh, I've done it before and we've just used those and cooked those up or put them in smoothies as well. Let's go over to the eastern garden plot. 
So here we are over in the eastern garden plot. First thing we have here is our uh, two rows of beans, the scarlet red runner beans over on this side, which the hummingbirds absolutely love the flowers. On this side here, we have the uh, Cherokee Trail of Tear beans. Both of these have been very productive for us, and we save the seeds from them each year, and they do great. And uh, we use this cattle panel trellis with the T-posts in the center of them. We mound up the, uh, the compost right up against the side of it. As some of the beans start to fall down, we'll stick them up there and we use a single drip tape on each one. Here we have um, the permanent raised bed with two raised beds with three rows of uh, leeks in them apiece. And these are buried about 10 inches down. The birds do like to make nests with these early in the season. And I will try to uh, shoot more video of the weeding systems that I'm using over here. I don't like to spend more than an hour a week over in here at most, or an hour every two weeks with the weedings that I do do. And it's worked out pretty well so far with that, with, with that amount of time being spent spent here. So we're pretty productive and using the system we're using, which I'll describe in another video, it works out pretty well. So two rows of beans, uh, six rows of leeks here. Then we get over to our broccoli. Now the broccoli looks a bit better here, even though it was planted a couple weeks later, later than in the central garden plot. And I think it's because of the tremendous amount of heat that's radiated out from those weed mats over in the other video uh, in the other garden plot where these ones do much better uh, when they aren't so closely uh, close to those heat uh, heat producing weed mats then we get over here this is our cauliflower again this is doing very well uh, as compared to over there in, in the other system our uh, cabbage these are all about two weeks behind uh, the other uh, plants over in the other in this uh, central garden plot so these show that they're smaller in in size but we'll see how they produce compared to the other ones now here we got a five uh, row system here we've got some peppers some of which I let the weeds get a little bit too carried away over in this here we've got our uh, uh, shallots some of our shallots planted in this section right here so two rows of some uh, uh, hot peppers, shallots, then we got some onions over in this area. There's our red onions along in here. And this is our hardy kiwi right up here. And we're getting some of the kiwis starting to develop, but usually the birds get to them long before we get to taste them when they get ripe. <laughs> Little dickens. That's where we're propagating many of those. So here we've got uh, here we got some more uh, cauliflower over in here, some dill. What else do we have here? More dill, cauliflower, and then we got some cabbage, and then we got some broccoli down there, some uh, opportunistic lemon balm in here, which we'll be transplanting. On the other side of the tree there of this uh, locust tree is are the uh, leeks, and here we've got some basil planted over here and our two rows of beans as well. Now we'll go over into the rest of the garden area. This one we used to have a set of sliding glass doors on it and, and because we were going to close this up in the winter but it's just too hard to get to it and it's, and it's not as productive of an area during the winter time as I would like it to be for us to spend the time digging our way out here and work. So we've got some uh, squash plants planted on the outside over here. Uh, some uh, squash plants planted on the outside over here. We haven't, they haven't been as productive. I'm sorry, cucumbers, sorry. Uh, haven't been as productive as in years past because I let the weeds just go crazy in here. So this was just loaded with weeds the other day and I came over and did some. So we got some peppers planted on this side, some peppers here, a few bean plants as well in here. We did have ginger over here, but it was so cold and rainy for so long, they didn't make it. Uh, really frustrating that is. And uh, so that's about it in here now. If you go back, I think one year ago and two years ago, you see this was all cardboard uh, sheet mulched, uh, raised beds with, with 
compost on each side with weed mats with holes in them on each side and then probably six to eight layers of cardboard and paper products down here with wood chips put on top of it then weed mats on top of that and then wood chips on top of the weed mats as well in the center and uh, I pulled the weed mats out this season and run the tilter down here to break up the material have have the uh, the nutrients start getting more and more absorbed into these wood chips as well but we'll see how this goes this was the is the most recently planted bed in here it was, looks a little bit tannish over in here because this is the area where we set the weed mats for a while and over here the calendula and more dill plants over in here so Thea just harvested a whole bunch of the flower heads today and uh, here we've got our garlic and yes I let the weeding get out of hand over here again but our garlic has been doing good we just harvested the last of the garlic scapes here we have more of the shallots planted here these ones have gone to and this is the oats that actually still had seed in them unfortunately uh, so I'm behind I'm not maintaining this as well as I'd like over here we have our strawberry bed this is the one that I put in this last fall after having all of the sorrel and other weeds that were in here and I really brought in lots of uh, fresh uh, compost uh, they've done pretty well Thea loves leaving the purslane in here and we got I don't know how many gallons of strawberries out of these two beds this one I'm gonna probably try and rebuild either this coming fall or the following uh, fall but I like it these are more challenging to harvest there's tons of them it can take two days for Thea to harvest all the strawberries out of here as you get you know so many gallons out of here but it's much easier when I first put in the bed and I mound it up so it's pretty high in the center now this one I mounted up pretty high last year but it they the strawberries do so much better when they're on a mound as far as ease of picking they grow fantastic when they aren't in a great big mound uh, and they don't need as much watering and this year we had a fantastic a bunker crop of uh, strawberries so that's been awesome Here's our rain gutter down here. Uh, we did lay down some weed mats to, to suppress some of the grasses and weeds growing up in here so it's more pleasant. And we're gonna have to do some more weeding in here. And what I'll do is I'll turn off the irrigation to this system right now, now that I think of it. And uh, so we have the parsley and the cilantro both over in this location. Since it's a rain gutter garden, it doesn't have to be watered very often. The water's retained and it wicks up from the bottom in these, in these uh, pans. Uh, so turn off the water for the better part of a week is what has to be done and then use the wire weeder in here and pull these weeds out which come out usually pretty quickly the other thing I really like about the weed mats is since they get good uh, sun exposure here dropping the weeds on top of the weed mat uh, you know completely neutralizes the root system so they're no longer viable and all and here's another spot here so the beans do well with the weed mats right up against them but a lot of the squash plants our winter squash plants they were doing great but as soon as we got those days in the in the mid 80s with the high humidity and all they just they just uh, completely succumb to the conditions so they our winter squash do very good when we have them up front uh, in the second food forest area and they have all soil around them and uh, the thing we got to worry about with them is all the wildlife there as well munching on them so I so here's a little brief update on our fig trees so we got quite a few fig trees here and citrus had a few of these were still out and back by the uh, by the coop the deer got to them and chopped some of these down so these four right here were outside they got beat up pretty badly but our uh, our lemon, uh, Myers lemons and orange trees, the rest of our citrus trees have been doing well. We have two different types of fig trees here. We have the, uh, the brown turkey fig and the uh, Chicago hardy fig tree. And here's our citrus trees. These all got beat up by the ducks and the uh, geese and the, and the chickens two years ago. Uh, but they're all coming back and doing pretty well and these are the ones I got cuttings from as well so there we are an update with our uh, fig trees
So in conclusion, uh, one of the things I'd say is my preliminary results thus far when we compare the weed mat systems that we've been using that is almost a weed free system over here in the central garden plot does have some drawbacks. We do have some uh, radiation heat uh, damage to the uh, to the plants planting in the planted in this system and last year we had a really good crop out of every out of all of the plants uh, and I really thought it was the best way uh, for us for this point in time in in our uh, development whereas when we compare uh, you know apples to apples or <laughs> cauliflower to cauliflower we can see a difference between the two methods. This is more bio-intensive over in these uh, eastern garden plots and less damage from what I believe is caused by the radiation, the, the heat retention or absorption from the black mats. Uh, more time uh, put into weeding over here, but we'll have to see at the end of the season, at the season how good the, the produce actually looks at the end of the season. I can already detect some of the curly kale, which usually does absolutely fantastic. We closed up the weed mat a little bit too early. Same thing with the cauliflower over here. So that's what we're doing. We're exploring uh, some of the benefits and the challenges with, e with each growing system that we're, we're doing. Hopefully next year, if I get enough compost and I get, get a couple more beds uh, ready, we'll be able to start doing some uh, cover crops and interplanting uh, within the cover crops, rolling, rolling the cover crops down and all. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that, but it, there's only so much that I can do at a time. And, uh, and comparing the systems really is beneficial for us to learn from. So I hope this video was somewhat informative, gave you some ideas, uh, gave you, gives you some things to think about if you're thinking of adopting any particular system. Uh, we certainly have learned a lot by going through these systems over the years. And so I hope it's been of some benefit to you as well. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I really enjoy uh, you know, having the interaction with the community as well. Share this video if you think it was of value. Please give us a thumbs up if you think it was of value. Really uh, enjoy your support. If you do buy any of the, the tools or the equipment or you shop at Amazon, if you can use our affiliate link down below, that can help us out to, to uh, acquire more tools and try out more things as well. Thanks so much for watching, folks, and have a great day. Bye-bye now. Thank you.